In this fixed gear q and a i'll answer whether a bunch of different fixed gears are worth your money who should buy used fixed gears give you my number one safety tip for riding and more coming up what's up i'm zach gallardo life is short but don't make it shorter so ride your bike every day to be reasonably dangerous and be sure to hit the subscribe button to watch more fixed gear videos just like this one every saturday afternoon as always we'll be talking about a lot of bikes and components today so feel free to check those out at the link in the description at any point during this video so first of all a lot of people ask whether a bunch of bikes are worth their price keep in mind i've never ridden these bikes my opinion will be based off of paper specs and what people's general experiences have been with them first up would you recommend the state bicycle core line for a beginner so the state base core line starts at $300 and for that you get a high tensile steel frame, 40 millimeter deep wheels, and a bunch of really basic components that aren't really great in my eyes. At $300, if you spend $150 more, you'll get a bike that is more than twice as good. It'll be a lot more reliable, it'll be a lot more fun to ride, and you'll be able to fall in love with cycling a lot easier. At the $300 price point, I would say pay more upfront and you'll save money in the long run. And what about the state 6061? black label for beginners. The black label is a step up from the bottom of the barrel components that come on the core line, and there's not all that many complete fixed gears at this price point at $630. On paper, the complete bike doesn't seem like a clear winner, but it does seem like it's fair for the price. Also, State Bicycle Co. will be sending me a 4130 core line and a 6061 black label version 2 very soon, which I will be able to review. Stay tuned for that in the coming months. Is the Tribe Chromo line worth $500 and does it come close to the Kilo TT? In the US, I think that the Tribe Chromo line is $150 to $200 too expensive. You can just get a lot more bike for less money. Chromo is not a great buy. Pretty much every single component on the Tribe Chromo is lower quality than the Kilo TT Pro, and the TT Pro costs less money, so it's, it's not even close. Well, you have different styles of reasonably dangerous t-shirts for each season or month. There will only be one style for each run, that way they'll be special, and the first run for this reasonably dangerous t-shirt goes to print next week, so be sure to order yours at the bonfire link in the description before you can't. What about Zycle Fix and Encore Wheels? I honestly didn't even know that Zycle Fix was still in business. Six Ku has a nearly identical bike, if not an exactly identical bike, just with different decals, for $125 less. So get a Zycle Fix if you like throwing money away. Encore wheels subjectively look really cool. They are heavy though at 1350 grams per wheel, not the set, that's per wheel. And because of that, they'll feel sluggish at starts and when you're going uphill. But because they have all that weight, it will carry more momentum and it'll probably be like a bat out of hell if you're riding downhill. Basically, you're paying $400 and probably some ride quality for fixie points. What about the Throne Track Lord? I've never met anybody that has ridden this bike. It looks more like a fixie that's meant to be flashy than a proper functional fix gear. The down tube is straight up ridiculous. It looks like it would ride really stiffly. To me, it just looks unnecessarily uncomfortable even if it is trying to pretend to be a proper track bike. It should really be called the Fixie Lord because ain't nobody riding this thing on the track. It doesn't even have track geometry. I think the seat clamp looks dumb. Also, the proprietary seat post is dumb. I don't care how many arrow gains you're getting. You're not competing on this thing, and it just limits your seat post options for no reason. The complete Surly Steamroller. I think it's a good buy for $800. It can fit wide tires, which makes it a really versatile bike and makes it the ultimate commuting machine. It comes with mid-range, reliable components, and nothing really needs to be upgraded out of the box. And what about the big block? Well, the big block is a similar story, except it costs $950. It is different than the steamroller though, since the big block is a track bike, but it's a track bike that can fit 32C tires, which is pretty rare. It is $150 more than the steamroller, but I think it does have slightly nicer components overall, which justifies the price increase. Do you plan to build another bike after the Nature Boy? I have no current plans to build a track bike, but ever since I sold my Kilo TT and then built up the Nature Boy, I've been itching to build another track bike just because it has a completely different riding style. But what I do like about the Nature Boy is that it's really versatile. It can ride just about anywhere that I want. It rides really smoothly on pavement with wide tires, and I can still take dirt roads and gravel roads. On top of that, the wide tires allows it to just 
eat potholes and railroad tracks. Also, it's sparkly purple, which is pretty ideal for me. So it's hard to say whether I'll completely get rid of it, but I'm always open to having a track bike. Stay tuned for the full Nature Boy review that I did in collaboration with Michael from Locked In in about two weeks from this video. Have you thought of doing a bike check series? The answer is yes. If you're in the Sacramento area and you have a fixed gear that you would like me to check and make a video of, please do email me at I am at zackgallardo.com with bike check meetup as the subject line. I always like meeting up with you and just nerding out about bikes. It's fun to meet up. Hit me up. Thoughts on branded super deep Vs like the H Plus Sun Eero or the Velocity B43. These types of wheels are great if you really need durability and you don't mind the weight penalty. They're great for heavier riders on rough roads or if you're doing fixed gear freestyle and doing stair drops, bike polo, that kind of stuff. For most people, it's form over function. They're flashy. Some people think they look cool. And if it's any indication to you, Velocity discontinued the B43 a couple years back, which kind of shows how niche of a wheel it was. What's the most you're willing to pay for a complete bike, and what's the least? I like building my own bikes, so the most that I would pay for a complete is like 500 bucks if I just need a secondary bike or a beater. But for the least, my first fix here was a Motobicon track from Bikes Direct, and I added on about $50 of pedal upgrades to it, and I wouldn't go lower than that. Even as a beginner, that was pretty much the minimum that I would accept. No lower than 330. Buying a used fixed gear as your first, a good option. It is a good option if you know your bike stuff and if you know what you're getting into. You need to ask a lot of questions when you're buying used, know how many owners it has, how it was used, how many miles the components have, and whether it was stored indoors or outdoors and how well it was maintained. If you don't know how to discern that stuff, I would say go get a complete or maybe even like a built up bike made of used components from a reputable bike shop. But if you're just buying off of eBay or Craigslist or something, you might save a couple bucks in the short term, but there's a whole lot of risk in the long term and you're likely to be spending more. Can you make a bike fit out of a wrong sized bike? Let's say the frame is too big or the frame is too small. Either way, you're going to have to play with the cockpit, the stem and the handlebars. It is possible though. For instance, I gave my dad a 58 centimeter bike which was too big for him he's about five ten and a half ish it originally had risers on it we swapped those out for some swept back townie bars and now it fits him well it's because those swept back bars effectively shorten the reach of the bike same story when i got my nitto boscos i had to get a longer stem because the sweep back is just so far back. And if I had used the same stem, it wouldn't have fit correctly. If your bike is too big and you don't wanna get townie bars, that does kind of limit it though to your stem options. Get a shorter stem, see what fits. Similarly, if the bike is too small, you can get a longer stem and longer bar combination but it will ride more aggressively with more saddle to bar drop than a bike that's fitted correctly. How do you deal with riding in bad weather conditions? And at what point do you just say, nah, screw it. Here in Sacramento, California, it's mostly hot weather that I would consider the bad weather as opposed to winter. In general, if I want to do something more than I want to ride my bike, I'm gonna go do that instead. So if it's over 100 degrees or 38 degrees Celsius, which we have a lot of those days here in Sacramento in the summer. I'm just gonna say screw it. And I get around that by just riding my bike in the early morning and in the evenings. Less heat, less traffic, it's all good. I'll also say screw it if the air quality is really bad. This is the city of trees and it can really kick up my allergies and asthma. But I do get around that by just riding with a medical mask, carrying around eye drops, nasal spray, the whole nine yards. And in winter, if it's raining really hard and if it's really cold, which is pretty rare here, I'll say screw it. But even then I try to squeeze in like a three mile ride just to feel refreshed. Tips for doing 100 plus kilometer rides or long distance traveling. Ride slowly, eat a little bit every hour, Pack plenty of water, but be ruthless and don't bring things that you don't absolutely need. If you're not, your gear can quickly add up and it might not feel like it's a lot of weight when you're leaving and packing, but you're going to be carrying it and pedaling it for hours on end and it really takes a toll on your body. And lastly, focus enjoying on the ride instead of getting to your destination. It'll just make it more fun. Number one safety tip that you think more riders should know. Be polite and civil to drivers no matter what. Wave and smile if they let you pass 
through an intersection and don't let a driver's bad decisions get to you. If you get angry, you're just making your day worse and you're not benefiting them in any way. If they made a particularly stupid decision, you can politely ride up to them, tap on their window and say, hey, I understand, you're in a rush, we all are, but because you're in such a rush, you almost killed me back there. And yes, it is possible to say these things politely. Drivers will never respect cyclists until cyclists respect drivers. Be polite and it'll make the roads better for everybody. All the bikes and the components and the shirts that we mentioned here will be linked in the description. The first run of these limited edition reasonably dangerous sunny tees is next week, so order yours while you still can to rep the reasonably dangerous life. And Fixie Famous shouts to Mikey Sincots, Albert Wu, Merrick Drevecki, Robert Terpstra, Blue Tick Hound, Duella Zero One, Evil Ernie, Mark Vandeventer, and Jazeel for supporting the channel through Patreon and making these Fix Gear videos possible. And don't watch this upcoming video if you haven't ridden your bike yet today. Instead, ride your bike every day to be reasonably dangerous.